Anthony John Abbott. The man most likely to beat Julia Gillard and become Prime Minister, apart from Kevin Rudd, has died after a short illness. After a short soundbite. After a short ultramarathon. After a short interview with Lee Sales. Like many of his lifelong political opinions, Tony Abbott entered the world in 1957. It was a very difficult birth. His delivery was drawn out and painful, much like his speeches. Born in London, Abbott's family fled comfort and lack of persecution in England, coming to Australia on an overcrowded boat. At Sydney's elite Jesuit schools, the young Abbott was imbued with a strong belief in the principle that all people are created equal. That all men are created equal. That all white men are created equal. That all Catholic white men are created equal. As a Rhodes Scholar, Abbott won two Oxford Blues for boxing and was known for his intense but unorthodox training regime. In his mid-twenties, Abbott studied to become a priest, but he left the seminary after three years. Tony was always uncomfortable about homosexuality, so not entering the priesthood was probably the right call. As an up-and-coming Liberal MP, Abbott trumpeted his conservative credentials. The political love child of John Howard and Bronwyn Bishop. The claim was later proved wrong when the real love child came forward. <laughs> when the story of his own illegitimate son was revealed, the nation saw a gentler, more caring side of Tony Abbott. What do you know, eh? DNA tests would later reveal Abbott's gentler human side was in fact someone else's. Mr Abbott's paternity test came back negative. Relentlessly negative. <laughs> Like all politicians, for Tony Abbott, life in the public eye was very costly. For decades, he was stalked by a serial pest whose bizarre obsession seemed to have no sane purpose. In 2009, Abbott became opposition leader and surprised many with his ability to connect with voters. Uh, 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 I, I, uh, uh. He proved such a success as opposition leader that after the 2010 election, he was given the job again. For a time, it seemed inevitable he would become Prime Minister. But instead of developing policy, Abbott split his time between intense exercise, earning extra cash as a model for workplace safety gear, and scowling at journalists. You're not saying anything, Tony. But just when Tony Abbott was poised to take the top job, his life was cut short. His untimely passing has been blamed on a Labor Party dirt unit. Blamed on the carbon tax. On women on testicle asphyxiation. <laughs> Tony Abbott's death has sparked an outpouring of emotion. We'll remember the humour, the fun, the friendship and the fascination. He was incredibly loyal, very, very strong. He was a very human man, truly an intellectual nobody. And it's like the whole world's caving in. <laughs> Unique person. Neither a philosopher nor a general. This is good news for Sheila's everywhere. Liberal Party colleagues gathered today to pay homage to their fallen leader by parroting glib, simplistic slogans that glossed over reality. In accordance with his wishes, Tony Abbott was buried and cremated with the Work Choices legislation. The service was followed by a heavy-handed public memorial staged for the media.